Hello! It's an audio roundup special! By which I mean, we'll be looking at some headphones and maybe some other things that make noises. Anyway, yes, headphones, those things you strap around your bonts that fire sound directly into your ear holes and enjoyment ensues. Unless, of course, you're listening to you too. Anyway, let's have a look at a pair now that come in a monstrous box. Ready? Steady? Boom! Is a noise I made with my mouth to comically over-exaggerate the size and weight of the box. Yes, SMS Audio, the only audio company that does everything by text message, presents Street by... 50 trademark, 50 cent, fiddy, I'm not entirely sure how you say his name. Let's have a look at his face. Here he is. Hello, thanks for coming out. Um, yes, I don't know. We're going to call him Fiddy for the purposes of this review. Maybe that's not right. I've, the last time I listened to hip hop, it was called rap. Um, and I think the last rap album I listened to was Tricks of the Shade by the Goats. I think, so that would have been literally 20 years ago. I'm old. But these headphones are new, so let's read what's written on the box. Over-ear wired, professionally tuned headphones with thump-up enhanced bass. Thump-up. Mm, I don't like words for the English language that can't be pronounced in the English language. Anyway, here they are, and they look quite futuristic and posh, but not as blingy as you would expect from a hip-hop bloke. Anyway, on the back, Street by 50 over here wired. Here they are. Let's read about them. Polished trim, mm. soft leather memory foam cushions, mm. shatterproof UFP adjustable headband, UFP is trademarked, but they don't actually tell us what it stands for, and a rubberized coating. Professionally tuned 40mm drivers, I almost know what that means. Professional studio sound, enhanced bass, and passive noise cancellation. I'm no expert, but isn't passive noise cancellation just mean it's got cushions that go round your ears? Anyway, let's see what's in the box, shall we? Spin it around. And, as with all posh boxes these days, it has flaps held in place by magnets to reveal some headphones! Hello, headphones. Accessories below, it says, and it's right, you know. Here they all are. Here is the lead that you use to plug into the headphones and then plug into whatever it is you're listening to. Not getting too technical for you, am I? Um, the button here does iPod-y stuff, and look, it's got a microphone. We'll discuss that later. Also, there's booklets and there's a bag and... Ooh, actually, there's an adapter of some type. I didn't actually see that before. Wow, that's doubled the value. And it's quite a nice bag when they sort of rubbery... Ooh, and a cloth for cleaning them with... <gasps> Marvellous. Let me rub that in my face. Mmm. Soft. Yeah, put them in this. It'll stop you getting tomato ketchup over them or whatever it is you do with your headphones. Anyway, box out of the way. Fortunately, I have another room prepared especially for it because it's massive. And here are the headphones. Ready? Steady? Fiddy! Yes, they look very headphony. They've got nice soft bits to go around your lugs. They extend to the size of your head, and all that sort of stuff you would expect. Actually, let's see them modelled. They will, of course, be modelled by the Weeping Head of Terror. Here it is. On they go. Oh yeah, it's just like being in the studio with the Beatles or something. Actually, let's plug these in while we're out and about to give the full look. There we are. Marvellous. I've never seen a more beautiful image. Something slightly worrying is that the face detection on the video camera is actually picking that up, which might mean it's alive and will bite me later. So, we need to talk about these ear headphones then. Well, they're quite expensive, is the first thing. It's one of these sort of prestige ranges of headphones where you're sort of half interested in them sounding good, but also half interested in showing off how much you've paid for them. We'll get on to the exact price later, but warning, <coughs> it's a bit frightening. But the way he's put this here... Comments below, please. So, why do these things exist? Well, I would hazard a guess that old Fiddy saw that Dr Dre was making a fortune with his Beats range of headphones, which have proved very popular, and thought to himself, hmm, could do with me some of that success. Because that's exactly how Fiddy speaks, of course. He's not the first rapper to jump on the bandwagon either. Ludacris also produced a range, and I can't remember the name of them. Um, Soul, I think, as an S-O-U-L, not named after the fish. 
At least I hope they're called Soul, because if not, the comments below are just going to be a mass of abuse. Mm, look forward to that. So what did I think of these headphones then? Well, blimey Charlie, they're very impressive audio-wise, as you would probably expect. Um, yeah, reproduction is fantastic, bass is also very good. I've used these kind of professional level um, headphones at home in the dim and distant past, and all they managed to do really was show how bad the audio source you plugged them into was, as it just kind of brought up all the static in the background and made it sound poop. These do the opposite, and seem to make whatever you plug them into sound pretty fantastic, which is very nice, and by far the most important thing as you would assume. So yeah, that's all good. Now we get onto the bad, unfortunately. The first thing I discovered was they're too tight. Maybe I've got a massive distended cranium, but um, they were quite uncomfortable after a period. I just couldn't get them loose enough. Another problem, and could this could actually tie in with the fact of why they're so tight, is that there is a lot of noise bleed out of the sides. If I'm listening to them, the people near me can also pretty much hear exactly what I'm listening to, even on a moderate volume. So if you're on your own, that's not a problem. If there's other people around, make sure you're not listening to anything in back. Embarrassing. Um, visually, I really like the look of them. Um, they're slightly more understated than uh, Beats and Soul and all that stuff, and look a bit better for it. It's not something I would actually wear in the street, not because I'm ugly, but because I would be beaten to death and they would be stolen within 10 seconds of me leaving the house. But um, yeah, they do the job. Uh, the top bit here, to me, feels a little flimsy, but apparently it's made of some trademarked material, so we will be absolutely fine. The only other thing to consider is the quality of the microphone, which is absolutely rubbish. I mean, really, really bad. As in, when I tested it out, some people couldn't actually hear what I was saying on the other end of the phone, so there's no real excuse for that. Especially when you consider the price. <coughs> Are you sitting down? Yes, these retail for £200. That was the sound of my hat flying off, and I'll tell you what, I'm not even wearing a hat. I mean, as we said, they do live in this weird headspace where the amount you spend on them is almost as important as how good the headphones are, but blimey, that's a lot of money. Anyway, slight digression. I really wanted to test these up against these similar uh, models produced by Dre and Ludacris, but have no access to them myself. However, I do have access to a sound engineer who we shall call Steve. That's because his name is Steve. And I gave them to him and said, hey, tell me if these are as good as Beats and Soul, and also tell me generally what you think of them, please. And if you could record a little video for the people at home to tell them, that'd be great. And he refused, but he did write some stuff in an email. So, <clears throat> going through the email briefly, most of it I'm ignoring for the simple reason that I don't understand it, and he's using terms like soundstage, but his overall view of the headphones are quite impressive. He said they differ slightly from Beats and Soul. Beats and Soul are quite similar sounding, this sounds slightly different. Due to the way they interpret bass or something, he says these headphones are surprisingly not as good for hip-hop as the others, which is surprising considering who has endorsed them. But he said they sound better for pretty much everything else, which is pretty damn good, really. Um, so yeah, if you're after hip-hop, go for one of the others. If you're after not hip-hop, why not have a listen to these? Do you see how that works? Hmm. His only real criticism against them was that the upper mid-range can get a bit tinny. That's not something I noticed myself, but he's a sound engineer, so I will defer to him in that sense. But no, he was very, very impressed. And I said to him, would you pay £200 for these? And he said, fuck off. That was actually his response. <laughs> So yeah, we're getting into the kind of overpriced territory. So then I asked him, are they worth £100? And he went, mm, mm, uh, and made all sorts of thinking noises and said, yeah, yeah, if you could get them for £100, quid, I'd say they're pretty good. And that is kind of what sums it up, the fact that he had to hum and ha over whether they were worth half the price they're actually sold for. So in conclusion then, really lovely headphones, perhaps a little tight, but too damn expensive. But there we are. I suppose if they'd priced them lower, then people would just have gone for Dr. Dre and gone, cool, look at that cheapskate fiddy, his stuff doesn't cost as much, it's a load of rubbish, I'm going to wear these, and then go and dress as a peacock and walk around New York, or whatever it is these people do. And now for something substantially different. Right, these are fold-up headphones, so not directly comparable with the previous set we just had, but also they represent a very different design ethic. 
can't believe I just said that. Anyway, let's have a look at the Meze headphones. Mmm, understated box, mysterious lack of bling, and look, almost ambiguous arty photo, which could almost be of part of a posh car or something. But the back features a barcode which ruins the effect. Ugh. Oh well, what can you do? But also gives us the information on these Meze 55 audiophile headphones. I hate the term audiophile because it literally means somebody who is sexually aroused by sound. But uh, generally we use it more to refer to people who have just spent far too much money on a record player full of valves. Right, individually handcrafted ebony wood enclosure reproducing crisp but warm natural sound. Dedicated 40mm neodymium drivers, slim and lightweight design suitable for prolonged listening. 100% electroacoustic testing to ensure balanced sound. Compatible with iPod, iPhone, computers, MP3, CD players, etc. Oh, it was almost poetic till we got to that part. And lots of technical data that I don't really understand. Well, all right, I understand a bit about the three and a half millimeter gold-plated plug, but you would hope I do. So, what can we tell about this? Yes, very different sort of design ethic to this street, to say the least. Another difference is that they're called Meze as they were designed by an engineer called Antonio Meze which is a fairly direct link. Unlike our friend Fiddy here, of course, who basically um, turned up for this photo shoot and occasionally gets some royalties sent to him. I've just noticed, actually, look, he's somehow wearing those headphones over a cap. I can barely get them over my head. How on earth is he managing that? Perhaps he's got a freakishly small head. You heard it here first. All right, that's probably a lie. Anyway, let's go back to these Mise ones, shall we? Open it up. And look how posh they are. Now, when I first opened these up, here's what went through my head. Ooh, they're all small, they're all flimsy, and the cups aren't big enough, and ooh, they're not even real wood, they're made of plastic. <laughs> then I sat down for five minutes, stopped being such a whiny bitch, and grew the fuck up, and actually looked at the product. <clears throat> Things changed then, because I was wrong on all counts. For starters, they are wood, they're just very heavily lacquered, so they don't get scratched. They're not flimsy at all, they're actually extremely strong for what they are, there's a lot of movement and it feels very solid. And also, <coughs> this is something that surprised me, I'd never worn headphones with cups this small before, but they fit beautifully, sound excellent, are incredibly comfortable, and leak less sound than the old Street by 50, which is quite impressive. And, yeah, they're very sort of uh, understated, posh-looking things in order to go with, um, you know, your expensive hi-fi equipment. Oh, incidentally, must mention, this is not a microphone. These are just headphones. You know, it looks like a microphone, but it's not. So stop thinking about it. Let's see what they look like on. Mmm. Beautiful. Well... Not ugly, put it that way. Yeah, what did I think of these then? Well, sound reproduction is excellent, not quite as good as the street, although it must be said that if I hadn't have listened to the street then immediately swapped to them, I don't entirely know if I'd have been able to tell the difference. But what really got me about these is they're so bloody comfortable. Especially because when I first saw them I thought, oh god, they're going to be so uncomfortable, but no. Also, the price is £91, including delivery. I believe you ordered them directly from Mr. Meze himself. So yeah, kind of less than half the price of the other ones, that's a bit frightening. And in fact, you might be able to get them cheaper when they eventually end up on Amazon or wherever, because they will cover the postage cost, won't they? They're still very, very expensive headphones, don't get me wrong, but they do their job very well. OK then, time for some real quality. He lied. So yeah, enough of these expensive damn headphones. I'm sure you can get something from a supermarket for a few quid that's just as good. Also, I'm completely wrong. I present to you over-ear headphones cushion clip from the supermarket chain Tesco. Ideal for sport? Yes, certainly not ideal for listening to music. Have a look at them. <clears throat> Here's the bit that goes in front of your ear. Here's the little pad that doesn't quite touch your ear. Here's the hook that goes behind your ear to try and hold them on. And there's the spiky bit that sticks in your head. I have a theory about these, actually. Did you ever see that episode of Star Trek where they went to another dimension or something and there was an evil version of Mr Spock with a little beard? Well, I think Tesco went to that dimension and found the evil version of Antonio Meze and managed to convince him to use his audio powers for evil rather than good. Because I can only imagine these were designed by an audio engineer to be as bad as possible on purpose. They are absolutely 
awful. I mean, worse than something from Poundland. They sound ridiculously tinny. You can't put the volume up or it just goes all distorted. They don't sit on your ears properly. There's so much sound bleed from them that people next to you can hear it almost as loud as you can. They don't hold around your ears properly and they hurt like hell. In fact, I think there's only really one way I can demonstrate my feelings for these. And that involves dual wielding hammers. Fiddy went on to dress like a farmer at a court appearance. Antonio Meze designed a much bigger set of headphones. And the smashed clip-ons were elected Governor of Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs>